Thank you for joining us at First Assembly of God Church in Clear Lake, California. Please welcome Reverend Lauren Freeman. This message was delayed to be released specifically on today. There are no coincidences in our lives. None. Today is December 22nd of 2021. That is 12 22 20 21. That's today. Yeah. Yesterday was December 21st, 2021. It was the winter solstice and the shortest day of sunlight for the year 2021. It could also be considered the darkest day of the year. From t- <laughs> It's a spiritual message. Stay with me. Buckle up. It's going to... Listen. Yesterday was the darkest day of the year. From today forward, in the time, the days will begin to increase in sunlight naturally. I believe they will also increase in spiritual light over the next six months. I believe you are in store for the most exciting time this world has ever known. People that were not born right now are going to moan and groan because they're not alive right now. This is exciting times to, exciting times to be in. So tonight's message is literally titled, Liberty or Freedom? It is an attempt to shed some light on the year ahead. 2022. About four weeks ago during prayer with the prayer team, we were specifically praying for Pastor Chris's message about opening the door. I saw two images of the Liberty Bell side by side. I didn't understand what the pictures meant at that time. I saw two bells. They were definitely the Liberty Bell. But I have continued to pray about it and ask the Lord to reveal more of it to us. During that time of prayer, I felt this spirit in my spirit that we as the prayer team were to pull on the ropes that ring those bells. There's two of them. I felt we were to actively participate, actively participate in what was going on in the spiritual realm and begin to ring these two bells. I heard the Spirit say one of the bells is named Liberty and the other bell is named Freedom. We began to pray and ring these bells spiritually for the next few moments. Since then, I have continued to do more research and see what the Lord wants to reveal to us. I looked up the image of the Liberty Bell. I found a website that described the Liberty Bell and I'm going to share some of that information with you tonight. There's a picture above my shoulder of what the Liberty Bell actually looks like. The Liberty Bell is recognizable for its crack. The Liberty Bell remains significant today for its message of liberty. The Liberty Bell bears a timeless message. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. This message is actually inscribed in metal on the Liberty Bell. The State House Bell, known now as the Liberty Bell, rang in the tower of the Pennsylvania State House. Today we call that building the Independence Hall, where the Declaration of Independence was signed for this nation. I'm talking to some people tonight. You need to get this. Speaker of the Pennsylvania Assembly, Isaac Norris, first ordered a bell for the bell tower in 1751 from the Whitechapel Foundry in London. That bell cracked on the first test ring. Local metal workers, John Pass and John Stowe, melted that original bell down to save the metal. They did that in Philadelphia, here in the United States. It's this bell, they recast it, 
that would ring to call lawmakers to their meetings and the townspeople together to hear the reading of the news. Bells are a warning to call the people to gather together. It's not until the 1830s that the old state house bell would begin to take on significance as a symbol of liberty. No one recorded when or why the Liberty Bell first cracked, but the most likely explanation is that the narrow split developed in the early 1840s after nearly 90 years of hard, heavy use, ringing the people to come and hear the news. In 1846, when the city decided to repair the bell, Prior to George Washington's birthday holiday, which was February 23rd, metal workers widened the thin crack to prevent its further spread and restore the tone of the bell to a unique by a unique by using a technique called stop drilling. They operated on the bell because it was just a hairline crack. The wide crack in the Liberty Bell that you see today is actually the repair job. If you look carefully, you will see over 40 holes that were drilled into the bell in this crack. But the repair was not successful. The public ledger newspaper reported that the repair failed when another fissure developed. The second crack running from the abbreviations for Philadelphia up through the word liberty silenced the bell forever. No one living today has ever heard the bell ring freely with its clapper. No one. The Liberty Bell currently sits in a museum. I want you to get this in your spirit. No one alive today, has heard it ring. This generation has not heard liberty ring in the Spirit. I'm telling you people, it's a spiritual message. I believe that the Holy Spirit has revealed this to us as a symbol of where our nation is today. The liberty of Christ has been silenced, and the crack of division has been widened. In addition, some are trying to keep the church in a museum. Trying to keep the church silenced with a crack of division in a museum. We've been asked by the Holy Spirit to proclaim, proclaim, the liberty and the freedom that's in Christ Jesus. Get ready. Get ready. The Liberty Bell inscription is from Leviticus 25.10. It states this, And you shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all the inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you And each of you shall return to his possession. And each of you shall return to his family. That's written on the Liberty Bell. This verse refers to the Jubilee or the instructions to the Israelites to return property to free slaves every 50 years. Speaker of the Pennsylvania Assembly, Isaac Norris, chose this inscription for the state house bell in 1751. Possibly to commemorate the 50th anniversary of a very significant event. The inscription of the Liberty Bell on the state house bell, let me back up. He chose this in 1751, possibly to commemorate the 50th anniversary of William Penn's 1701 charter 
of privileges, which granted religious liberties and political self-government to the people of Pennsylvania. That's what the declaration that he had signed in 1701 was for. Religious freedom. Political self-government by the people. The inscription on the Liberty Bell and the State House Bell, also known as the Liberty Bell, went unnoticed during the Revolutionary War. After the war, abolitionists seeking to end slavery in America were inspired by the Bell's message. Liberty in Hebrew is the word deror. Strong's word number 1865, it means freedom, liberty, release, setting free. Jesus used this exact same word, liberty, in his very first sermon and quoted Isaiah 61.1. Anytime the Bible has a first mention, you need to take note of what was spoken because it is very important. In, Isaiah, in Luke 4, 17 to... Thr- uh, no, 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 could you show? No, no, put us in the show. Jesus' first sermon is recorded in Luke 4, 17 through 19. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The acceptable year of the Lord. We are getting ready to go proclaim Christ's liberty in 2022. The next thing I looked up was Jubilee and the timing of the next Jubilee in America. We need to know when America was born as a nation. And that is typically the first contract or the declaration a group of people make about a nation. Most people are not aware that the 400th anniversary of the signing of the Mayflower Compact and many others would say that America's covenant with God as a nation Officially arrived November 11th, 2020. November 11th, 2020, it was last year, was the 400th anniversary of that declaration. A covenant with God for this nation. The Mayflower Compact and those who signed it promised to inhabit the land for the glory of God and the spreading of of the gospel of peace and was signed during a Shemitah year in the biblical year 5381. That was November 11th, 1620. Just like Scripture tells us to keep the Sabbath holy on the seventh day, God also commanded Israel to keep the Shabbat year, the seventh year, known as the Shemitah year, when there would be no planting or harvesting to let the land rest. This nation's gone through a year of rest. As well as the forgiveness of each person's outstanding debts. Why why is this important to you? The Hebrew Shemitah year began September 6th, 2021. In the Hebrew year 5781, on the biblical calendar. This means the true 400 year anniversary of the signing of the Mayfair Compact, America's contract with God 
was on October 21st, 2021. To know if this is a good thing or a bad thing for America, we need to know both the blessing and the curse of the Shemitah. There is one more significant marker in the Scripture time cycle that happens only once every 50 years at a cycle of seven Shemitah years called the Jubilee. When slaves are freed and returned to their families and land was returned to its former owner. Hence, as America enters the eighth Jubilee, eight signifies new beginning, the eighth Jubilee, it is a sign of a coming economic and social reset. A leveling of the social and economic playing field. The very same verse written on the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, is the same verse declared on the Jubilee that says, Ye shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim the liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants. Leviticus 25.10 The curse of not keeping the Shemitah. However, it is important to also note that when Israel did not keep the Shemitah years holy, God did it for them. And not in a nice way. Through judgment. Leviticus 26, 14-46 details the punishment for not giving the land its rest and is one of the chief causes of the 70-year exile to Babylon, so that the land could rest as God promised it would, making it ten Shemitahs of rest. Speaking of ten Shemitahs, this coming Shemitah will also be the tenth Shemitah, or the 70th year since the first Shemitah year in 1951, since Israel was founded in 1948. There are no coincidences. God's timing is exact. America's coming Shemitah, judgment or blessing? If you are thinking it is simply a symbolic year without any real world effect or consequences, the data in history say otherwise. During the last eight Shemitah years in the United States, there has been a noticeable economic recession or downturn during each Shemitah year with great effect to the global economy. To the spiritual believer, it seems what triggered these consecutive recessions began with prayer being taken out of the schools and continuing with the legalization of abortion and same-sex marriage. Those are abominations to God. Is America being warned by God? The significance of 400. 400 years is significant for many reasons in the Bible, but is most notably attributed to Israel's 400 years of slavery in Egypt. But when they left, they also remember that they left with the riches of Egypt. After the total judgment of the nation and the gods of Egypt, leaving the land desolate. As the United States enters its 400th year, the question remains, will the people turn back to God or not? Will a David arise to lead the nation in righteousness and justice? Or will God sovereignly cause the land to be free? To rest. Could this 400 year jubilee of the United States have anything to do with the prophecies in Scripture regarding the return of the Jews to Israel? Did you know about 40% of the world's Jews still live in America? But could this signal a coming shift, an exodus of the Jewish people from America back? to Israel 
Well, something so tragic in America caused them to want to move back. One thing is for certain. The fallen kingdom of darkness is doing everything it can to speed up the downfall and the demise of America. But there is a remnant who refuses to bow to the gods of men who are fasting, praying, repenting on behalf of the nation. I want you guys to say, I'm God's remnant. I'm God's remnant. Get that in your spirit. It is certainly an Elijah moment in America where the nation is being forced by God to decide who they will serve. Are they going to serve Baal or the God of Israel? Let's look at both the year 2022 called the Gregorian calendar, which began with the birth of Christ, and the Hebrew calendar year 5782, which started with Adam. There are two calendars, two systems at the same time. The Jewish New Year 5782 began in September of 2021, just a few months ago. But it is based on a lunar cycle, whereas the Gregorian calendar is based on the rotation of the earth around the sun and begins January 1st, 2022. One way of looking at what prophetic season some of us feel we're in a season and it's about to change. We may be entering into it by looking at the Hebrew alphabet. Hebrew alphabet is very interesting. There are a total of 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, and each letter has a phonetic sound, a shape or a picture that goes with it, a word that identifies that letter, and a numerical value, all in this one system called the Hebrew alphabet. For example, A, Alif, has the number one associated with it. B, or Bet, has the number 2 associated with it. The 22nd letter, get, get your mind around this. The 22nd letter in the Hebrew alphabet is the letter Tav, with a gematria numerical value of 400. That's, shut the front door, right? Yeah. Tav has the value 400, and, whew, and it is the 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Right? The number 400 is very significant in the Bible. Here were just a few times that 400 is mentioned. Israel in Egypt bondage for 400 years. There was a 400 year famine of word of the Lord until the birth of Jesus Christ. 400 year famine of the word. 400 years ago was the landing of the Mayflower at Plymouth Rock. Tav is also the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet signifying completion. This letter is extremely significant and symbolizes two things. The Hebrew letter Tav has two meanings. It means to put a mark on or sign something. Put a mark on or sign something. It also means truth. The word Tav, Strong's word number 1820, is used in Ezekiel's chapter 9. The exact same word Tav is spoken there. Similar to the Exodus marking the doorposts of the Lamb's blood in connection to the coming destruction of the first temple of Israel's idolatry. Ezekiel 9, 3 through 4 and 6 says this. Now the glory of God of Israel went up from above the cherubim where it had been and moved to the threshold of the temple. Where's the threshold? At the door. Then the Lord called to the man clothed in linen who had the writing kit at his side and said to him, Go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament 
over the detestable things that are done in it. God's people that are lamenting and praying for Him to change it. Slaughter the old men, the young men and women, and the mothers and children, but do not touch anyone who has the mark. Begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the old men who were in front of the temple. That's Exodus 9, 3 through 4 and 6. This is the passage Peter also related to in 1 Peter 4, 17. For it is time. Say, it is time. For judgment to begin at God's household. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? The number two. In the Hebrew alphabet is bet. The Hebrew biblical, the Hebrew Bible actually begins with the letter bet. Rather than a leaf. And the picture or the pictograph of bet symbolizes a house. Should be a picture of it behind us. The letter bet can also symbolize and mean duality. Two things going on at the same time. Otherness and a paradox. A change. Now pay. The letter pay represents the number 80. And it is associated with the decade we are in. 5782 is the Hebrew year we're, we're entering into. So you need to look at the letter pay. It has the number associated with it of 80. Pay symbolizes the meaning mouth. There is also a hidden letter bet. The number two inside this letter that's hidden. Within the letter pay, which symbolizes an unveiling or a revelation. There's two systems that are going on right now. The world and God's spiritual realm. The world is trying to silence the church. The world is requiring you to wear a mask and cover your face and your mouth. God is telling us to proclaim and to speak forth truth and his light. Therefore, in the context, the year 2022 or 5782 in the Hebrew will begin with a marking of the truth beginning with the house of the Lord, the church, and will move outwardly. 2022 is also a Shemitah year, the seventh Sabbath year of rest. All of this is colliding together at the exact same time. We are therefore literally witnessing an end of something and a beginning of something else. A person will be marked and defined by the truth according to which side you belong on. Are you going to be marked as belonging to God? Or are you going to take the mark that the world wants you to move freely about with? For some, there will be great deliverance as there was in the events of the Exodus Passover or for those during the prophetic Ezekiel's time of the first temple who were marked and spared disaster. God's chosen are going to be marked and spared disaster. This can also symbolize a great unveiling as in a revelation of the truth leading to a revival. We're in a famine of God's word. The most illiterate generation when it comes to biblical context ever. For others, there will be a great time of trouble and despair and can represent an unveiling or exposure of corruption, evil agendas and lies. In addition, in addition, the 20... It gets better. In addition, the 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Tav, like I've already mentioned. 
And it also has a numerical value of 400. The letter Tav looks like this. It should be a picture above my shoulder. It's a picture of the doorposts. And is used describing the blood of the Lamb during Passover. It's also the number for 22. It also means the mark. It's also the symbol in Ezekiel that they wrote on people's foreheads. Whether or not they would be destroyed or they would not. I also found another picture. Of the letter Tav. I don't believe in coincidences. It's a door. A very large door. A very large door with four hinges. I believe we are about to go through a door into a very exciting season for the church. True believers are going to be marked by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the truth. I also believe the Lord has asked us, His church, to ring in the new year of 2022 with the sound of the Liberty Bell. So Nick's going to get that ready. Thank you for hanging in there. I know it's a long message. We are to proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. Please stand with me. And join with me. As we pray for our nation, we pray for the people that Jesus, that need Jesus, and to proclaim 2022 as the year of the Lord. On December 31st, 2021, the clock will strike 12 times. I believe on October or December 31st, 2021, the clock's going to strike 12 times at midnight, signifying the new year. We are to proclaim Christ in 2022. We're to wait on the Holy Spirit for what he wants to do. The altar team's up here. We're going to do an altar call. So if you need anything, if you've come here tonight expecting the Holy Spirit to show up, He's here. If you don't know Christ, I would invite you to come forward. We'll say a simple prayer with you to make sure that you are marked for His kingdom. Thanks for letting me preach.